Before doing any sanding, the neck needs to be as straight as possible. An 18 inch straight edge placed on the middle of the fretboard will give you all the information you need. Be sure to use a good light behind it as well for visibility. It should be at least as long as the straight edge. Looking at the 7th fret marker, I can see there's way too much relief. Turning the truss rod clockwise to tighten it, and it had to be tightened a lot, the relief is taken out and we're a lot closer to straight. The rule of thumb is if there's a gap at the middle of the neck but not at either end, the neck is in a Ford bow. To correct that, the truss rod needs to be tightened. If there's a gap at both ends of the neck but not at the middle, the neck is in a back bow. To correct that, the truss rod needs to be loosened. It's imperative to know how to use a straight edge, but a digital neck relief gauge makes checking neck relief even faster. This one's from G-Tech Guitar Works. Zero it out on a flat surface such as a fret leveling beam, then hold it down over the 1st and 17th frets so the probe presses onto the 7th fret. The neck relief will display in thousandths of an inch. Get it as close to zero as possible for a straight neck. Before continuing, check the rest of the neck for level. Lay the straight edge onto the fingerboard like it's a string following the string path. This will expose problems such as the one seen here, where there's a hump only on the high E and B string side from 12 to the end of the board. The hump needs to be addressed before doing anything else. Any flat block will do, but I love this carbon fiber under string leveling tool I made years ago. It works great for that purpose, but it also is phenomenal as a general purpose sander, allowing a strong grip with your thumb and fingers so you can apply as much or as little pressure as you need very easily. With the hump corrected, we can move on to the compound radius. The radius I use is a 7 and a quarter, 9 and a half, and 12 inch compound radius. The 7 and a quarter radius extends from the 1st to the 7th fret, the 9 and a half radius from frets 8 to 12, and the 12 inch radius from 13 to the end of the board. Since this is a straight 9.5 inch radius from the factory, I'll leave frets 8 to 12 alone for now and focus on putting the other radiuses on. I'll use 220 grit paper and make sure to keep the radius block as even as possible. It's easy to move it over to one side or the other if you're not careful. After sanding for a while, I'll check with the radius gauges to make sure everything looks good. Using the same light I used behind the straight edge, I'll hold the neck up and put the radius gauge on. Good light is critical for accuracy. I can see here, for example, that the 7 and a quarter radius is not as dead on as I thought it was and needs some more work. With the 7 and a quarter and 12 inch radiuses done, I'll blend in frets 8 to 12 by using a short 9 and a half inch radius block. Since it's already at the proper radius, my goal here is simply to lower this area until it's level with the others. You may think we're done, but now everything needs to be leveled. To do this, first mark the entire fingerboard. In this case, I'm using a regular pencil, as it shows up well on maple. Then use a long sanding beam and follow the string paths. Notice how I hold the beam straight in the middle, but fan it out slightly as I move left and right. The pencil markings will gradually disappear, and while doing so, will show you where you have to concentrate more of your efforts. Remember, preparation is everything when it comes to frets. Anything you don't correct at this stage will have to be taken out of the frets later. Fall away is a noteworthy final mention. Once the board's leveled, you can add fall away, which is a gradual reduction in fingerboard height from the 12th fret to the end of the board. It helps prevent the high strings from choking out when bending by giving them extra clearance. Using a 5000th feeler gauge, you can see here that there's more clearance at the end of the board until the gauge stops at the 15th fret. From 12 to 14, there's only a couple thousandths clearance, which gradually increases to the end of the board. My method for inducing fall away is to load an 8 inch steel sanding beam with sandpaper, then add a strip of fiberglass teflon tape up to a bit past the 12th fret area with the beam lined up with the end of the fingerboard. Mark the fingerboard from 12 to the end and sand until the marks disappear. The tape ramps the leveling beam so it'll remove more material at the end of the board and almost nothing at the 12th fret. 5 thousandths thick tape is a good place to start, but you can use less or more. Make sure to move the leveling beam back and forth along the string paths as we did earlier. Once you're absolutely sure it's good to go, it's time to apply the finish to the fingerboard. I'll use the same method I used in part 1 of this video series, shellac and grain alcohol on a lint-free cloth. After building up enough coats of shellac to get a dull sheen, I'll leave the finish thin by ending with renaissance wax which I can reapply in the future as needed. It provides good protection and, like the back of the neck, will let us get away with using less finish for a slicker, faster feel. One more advantage of shellac is that it's easy to apply between the frets, so if you change your mind and want a glossier finish later, need to touch it up for a finish repair, or just want to give it a couple more coats after some months or years of wear, it won't take long. 
With the fingerboard radiused, leveled, and finished, it's time to move forward. Tune in to part 3 to see a stainless steel refret complete with leveling, crowning, and polishing. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.